garden. So this is an Indian gentleman, gentleman like me who is doing a lot to reverse diabetes in India and he has got a very low personal fat threshold. In other words, Indian people you see become diabetic much before they become heavy. So that's why even though Indians are not heavy, even though Chinese people are not heavy, they have surpassed the prevalence of diabetes compared to Americans. Americans are heavier but they are not diabetic because our personal fat threshold is higher. So because their cells go hypertrophy first, they get overstuffed rather than getting hyperplasia, they don't get as much subcutaneous fat and they get visceral fat and ectopic fat. So here is an MRI diagram, these two are of identical weight, this person has a lot of internal fat, this person has much less internal fat, this person is healthier compared to this person. It's shown diagrammatically out here, this person has a lot more fat in the subcutaneous tissue, he is healthier. This person has less fat in their subcutaneous tissue and more fat inside their viscera and they are not as healthy. This is MRI diagrams, uh, Edwin Rodriguez out here in this hospital does this and he can show that whether you have low visceral fat or whether you have high visceral fat, this is 4.3 liters, it's all white here indicating that you have a lot of fat in your system. I told you my patients teach me a lot. So this is one of, and I have several of these patients, I did not recognize this before, I'm sorry I did not recognize this before. But now I recognize, I have some patients who are ripped, who have muscles that are well defined, okay, yet they have heart disease, <laughs> yet they have heart disease, yet they are diabetic, yet they are insulin resistant. And I was not listening to them. Now what we found is that these people have very low levels of subcutaneous fat, this is an MRI diagram, but inside their fat is filled because they don't have a high personal fat threshold. They cannot put fat in their subcutaneous tissue. There is a lady, so loss of subcutaneous fat reservoir that spills over into the internal organs, causes insulin resistance, diabetes and heart disease. This is an Olympic athlete, she's Canadian, uh, Priscilla Lopes. She was hurdling and one of the people in the audience recognized that she had a lipodystrophy, which means that she had the inadequate deposition of subcutaneous fat. That lady in the audience rescued her went, to her, went to her and told her that you have a problem with fat deposition. She changed her diet, she changed the way she uh, lives and has remained healthy. And that's the lady who helped her. Okay, um, I'm going to skip the slide because I got delayed by the by a few other issues. Um, so you have become insulin resistant if you have overstuffed the fat cells. That's what we talked about. So the question that comes is that why have we filled our fat cells? Is it because we eat too much fat? So that's the question, right? I mean, I'm saying, hey, your fat cells are overfilled. Is it because we have eaten too much fat? So the important contributing factor to modern obesity is reduced fat burning. It's not because you eat too much fat, you suck at burning fat, basically. <laughs> and you suck at burning fat because you consume a large amount of sugar and carbohydrates. Okay, so like I said, I want to give tribute to Ted Damon. He's taught me a lot. So here are fat cells that are defective, that are obese, that are fat, they are spewing fat into the circulation, the liver and skeletal muscle are getting fat. But not just that, one of the basic reasons why you don't remain healthy is because it affects the engine of your body. The, the organs that turn the sugar and the fat that you have into energy that you can use for movement to do any day-to-day -to -day activity is the mitochondria. So if you are eating a lot of carbs and if you are not able to burn fat, your mitochondria become unhealthy. So this is the engine of the body, it's called a nice membrane. This is the one, this is the part of the cell that is burning the fuel. And in athletes we said there are numerous mitochondria. But if you go through sarcopenia, sedentation, if you're eating a lot of carbs, you get glucose toxicity 
and you reduce the level of mitochondria in your cells and you become unable to burn fat. I told you I'll leave nobody behind. So when you look at this diagram you'll get scared. But please don't be, I'm going to take you through the very basics so that everybody understands. So this is the engine of the cell which is called the mitochondria. It can either burn sugar or fat. Amino acids which comes from protein is a very minor player so we're not going to talk about that. And I'm saying this for a reason. So how many of you know that when we exercise or day-to-day -day living we take in oxygen to be able to burn fuel and we put out carbon dioxide. Okay. Now there are people like Bill Ammonet and Clear Lake Hospital and I wish that uh, Todd Kaliva was here. University of Houston Clear Lake which has Bill Ammonet in, in it and Clear Lake Ho Regional Hospital are doing a joint project. In fact their main research center is going to be called uh, Clear Lake Hospital Sponsored Center. So Bill Ammonet can measure the amount of carbon dioxide that somebody releases compared to the amount of oxygen that you consume by putting a mask on them. Okay? So why am I saying this? The reason I'm saying this is that let's say we take Mr. Keegan and he's adapted to a low carb, high fat diet and you measure the amount of carbon dioxide he is putting out compared to the amount of oxygen that he is consuming and if he is able to burn fat he has to put out only 70 parts of carbon dioxide compared to 100 parts of oxygen that he uses so when you look at that ratio it becomes 0 0.7 so in other words I can take any of you put you on this machine and tell you whether you are burning fat or whether you are burning carbs this is a very important point. On the other hand, if somebody is eating sugar and that's sugar, then you release the same number of carbon atoms compared to oxygen atoms you eat. So your respiratory quotient, this is what is called the respiratory quotient, is 1. So a lower respiratory quotient of 0.7 means that you are fat burning. A high respiratory quotient means that you are carb burning. So here it is if you are at this level in which you are burning zero carbs and most fat your respiratory quotient would be 0.7 on the other hand as you start burning more and more sugar your respiratory quotient would be 1 why is that important if I take any two individuals here and if they are burning more fat so this is a study that was done they took two individuals a person burning more fat will be at a lower weight did it conk out? Hmm. so oh there it is will be at a lower weight compared to a person that is burning sugar at three years down the road so in other words defective fat oxidation remains a likely explanation for the fact that people gain weight couldn't agree more Okay, so a lower RQ we said means that you're fat burning. If Bill Ammonet measures your RQ and it's low, you'll be healthier, less obese, insulin sensitive, lower risks of diabetes, lower risks of heart disease, lower cancer risks. In other words, being able to burn fat is a marker of health. And that is something that can be measured. Okay, these slides are very important at this point. What is this? This is what is called a fat tank versus a carbohydrate tank. <laughs> so our body has a fat tank that is 200 times bigger than the carbohydrate tank. We said our carbohydrates we can store only about 100 grams. So here as you start eating, when you, when you reduce your carbohydrates, so out here you are burning a mixture of fat and carbohydrates when you are eating moderate amount of carbohydrates. Now if you stop eating carbohydrates what are you burning? This is the muscle that is using fuel. Are you burning fat or are you burning, burning carbs? You are burning fat. Okay let's see what happens as you start increasing the carbohydrate consumption. As you start increasing the carbs 
the body shuts off fat burning you can't burn fat anymore and if you increase it even more what is happening out here the extra carbs that you are eating is being converted to fat this is called the novo lipogenesis and there is spillover of the extra carbs into the fat tank on the other hand if your fat cells are healthy let's say you are like Mr. Keegan he's a low fat diet he's lost weight his fat cells have shrunk if you eat extra fat you have all this capacity to absorb or to store the fat without getting sicker okay um, now I'm just going to tell you a little bit about this so that you understand we can like I said you can either burn sugar or you can burn fat my, my thing is giving me a problem so if you burn too much sugar you will stop burning fat because sugar comes in here the cell says hey I have too much sugar I cannot burn the sugar let me convert it to fat so what it does is that it converts it to an intermediate citrate and then citrate gets converted to fat and when it gets converted to fat it comes and tells the cell or the mitochondria the engine of the cell don't take any more carbs uh, don't take any more fat because I'm overstuffed and overfilled <coughs> okay I'll skip through some of these until I get to the cute part okay so this is the cute part so this is a cell and here is insulin when insulin comes and attaches to the cell it says let's put sugar into the cells so there is sugar out there and sugar gets into the cell through a receptor or through a mechanism called GLUT4 so what's happening here is that if you're eating too much carbs the amount of extra sugar that you are getting cannot be burned and it gets converted to fat it gets converted to fat so if you keep eating extra sugar and you eat too much you're going to get fat but if on top of extra sugar and extra carbohydrates you are eating you dump in a bunch of butter what's going to happen are you going to gain a lot of weight or no because all of this cannot be burnt it'll now go straight to storage and it'll overfill your fat cells okay I'm almost done and I'm want to get finished rather than giving you a break I want to get this into the real world thing and what the real world thing means is this we make a very expensive rat chow which is called the obesogenic rat chow so in other words we feed this to the rats so that they can get as fast as as fat as possible and as fast as possible so here it is at two weeks by 20 weeks they have increased their body weight tremendously out here is body fat percentage their body fat percentage goes up tremendously within those 20 weeks that they are eating this rat chow so if you look at this rat chow it's low in protein it's sort of moderate in fat moderate to high in fat but it's very high in carbs in fact the total grams of carbs are double that of the fat this food is eerily similar to the standard American diet <laughs> it is sad that what we eat is very similar to the obesogenic rat chow because we eat a bunch more carbs and very little amount of protein and good fat this is like taking refined carbs and vegetable oils by the way vegetable oils have a lot of omega-6 they're inflammatory they're very bad nobody should have vegetable oils and the what we are eating is basically obesogenic rat chow now we also know because of aesthetic athletes because of muscle builders pe people who show how to reduce our body fat percentage tremendously just, just shrink our fat cells like crazy and the way you shrink your fat cells like crazy is by resistance training eating a high protein diet low carb and sort of moderate to lowish on fat okay so we know two extremes the standard American diet is high in sugar high in carbs the sugars block the the burning of fat and you become really heavy 
we also like I said we have dumped a lot of extra calories that are not good in the American diet which is grains oils and sugars so when you go home I want you never to consider eating bread rice pasta unless you are one of those people that I will talk about and also vegetable oils and sugar if you can put in your mind that I'm not going to eat vegetable oils carbohydrates from grains and uh, sugars you will be a lot healthier just by those three things the human body was not engineered to tolerate this much carbohydrates grains is an invention of modern agriculture that's probably about 200 300 years old it goes back to 1500 years but really it's not that old sugar consumption is very new it's promoted by the industry fruits the modern fruits are high in fructose they are not seasonal our ancestors only ate fruit in season and the fruit that they ate was tart and bitter vegetable oils are very bad because they are processed at 1200 degrees they are high in omega-6 they cause a lot of inflammation all of this leads to high insulin levels and high insulin levels destroy set satiety mechanisms it causes toxic hunger okay so this poor man is near morbidly obese and how do we treat insulin obesity and insulin resistance so this man has high triglycerides which is fat in his blood his fat cells are overstuffed his spewing fat into the bloodstream causing fa uh, uh, fatty liver his good cholesterol levels are low he's got high blood pressure gout heart disease cancer risk diabetes and fatty liver I don't know if you knew that high blood pressure is a direct cause it's directly caused by high insulin levels if I were to take somebody with high blood pressure and put them on a low carb diet their blood pressure will drop in a week much better than medications would so you take this person how do we treat it how did I treat it as a medical professional what I did was I would give them diabetic medications when I talk to you guys about diabetic medications many of you are on sulfonylureas what does sulfonylurea do to insulin levels does it drop it or increase it it increases it people who are type 2 diabetics are given large amounts of insulin what will it do to insulin levels in the body it will increase it I have seen astronomically high insulin levels in type 2 diabetics who are getting insulin so what are you doing by giving people insulin and what are you doing by giving people medicines that increase insulin levels you are doing this you're going on a vacation your suitcase is filled up but you want to get that extra sweater in there so you're going to sit down and, and close the uh, close the zip or this is the uh, this is what happens in Japan that is a train yeah. there are these people who are hired so that the train becomes full they shove the passengers into the train <laughs> so our fat cells are protesting they're saying hey we have too much fat uh, we have too much sugar but what we are doing as healthcare professionals is to tell you that we need to shove more fat into your cells and more sugar into your cells how do you correct this you correct it by stopping eating carbs that will decrease your insulin levels that will increase fat burning it will get, it'll get control over your appetite you will reduce your blood pressure fasting becomes feasible fasting becomes feasible only when you cut down your carbs and you will need to do exercise to improve your fat burning so low carb diet fasting and exercise is the best way to treat this so um, I'm going to do two slides on fasting and um, then I'm going to stop so this is the standard diet this is the insulin levels out there this is the low carb diet are the insulin levels falling they are they are about 50 percent but what is more powerful than a low carb diet at dropping insulin levels fasting. it's fasting so you will not get used to fasting if you are on a carb heavy diet when you stop eating carbs your insulin levels come down that's when you will get control over your hunger so that is an important point I want you to understand 
you don't need to fast for several days if you fast for 12 hours your insulin levels drop by 70 percent when you come to our office Nina will give you paper saying that hey this is how we want you to fast when you fast your fat mass goes down the fat mass in the study went down from 43 to 38 many people are concerned that they will burn muscle they will not burn muscle the muscle mass will remain the same all right now fasting is very easy you're busy you can fast you have no money no problem you don't need to eat <laughs> so don't require cooking so there are many many benefits of fasting other than that okay so I, I'm ending here guys sorry so a thin healthy person so this is a thin healthy person he's insulin sensitive that means the HOMA IR levels are low and like Mr. Keegan he goes on a 70 mile bike ride on a Friday and he completely empties the glycogen tank in other words he moves all the glycogen that is there in his muscles and in his liver so he can eat carbs because he has an empty glycogen tank his fat cells go hyperplasia that means they increase many more baby bats baby fat cells rather than becoming the large swollen giant fat cells he exercises so he's got mitochondrial health that is the engines that burn your fat so when he when he is like that then I can say eat what you want but unfortunately that's only about 10% of healthy people 10% of thin people and fortunately it's also 10% of obese people so 10% of severely obese people remain insulin sensitive because of the way their fat cells behave so if you are tofi on the other hand your fat cells become larger rather than becoming baby small fat cells you don't have any energy so you don't burn don't get through your glycogen tank and your mitochondria are unhealthy so that's all I have and um, I felt that uh, this was the basic information that we had not covered before because we had been focusing on stomach acid on cholesterol on vitamin D and vitamin K2 today we talked about the basics of the low carb high fat diet and why it is important for us to adopt so um, thank you and uh, we'll be here and we'll answer take any questions go ahead the cholesterol medicine or the other medications that lower the triglycerides and the cholesterol what is it doing it, you know because I get the impression it's really not helping but it's showing lower numbers on labs so is it so um, the question is is that there are medicines to re reduce your triglycerides which is called tricor phenofibrate or gemfibrazole I have used these medicines for 25 years they don't work the, the, the effectiveness of these medications is so bad that you might as well not take it so I don't know if that answer yes sir it's not really helping it's just making it look good on paper well it reduces a little bit but inconsistently it's not worth their side effects yes go ahead sir so good question don't eat vegetable oils does that include olive oil olive oil is monounsaturated oil it doesn't have a high amount of omega-6 but if you're having a olive oil it should not be cooked olive oil olive oil does not take heat very well it has got a low smoking point if you cook an olive oil you're going to oxidize it and make it bad yes sir are nuts good for you? so are nuts good for you that's a great question but my answer to that is that what is your personal fat threshold do you have overstuffed fat cells are you insulin resistant because nuts have fiber they have carbs they have proteins they have fats as a general rule nuts are much much better than grains than sugar than fruits you know the sugary fruits so in most people yes but if you are obese insulin resistant or if you are an Indian with tofi which is thin on the outs in, uh, thin on the outside fat on the inside the nuts may not be as good for you yes go ahead if I get off of the um, prescription of that I take for my stomach acid 
what do I use in place of that? So great question, if I get off of the omeprazole which is something that blocks the stomach acid, what do I go in place of that? So there is a whole YouTube video that was, there was an hour that I spent and I got a lot of complaints from people saying that hey I was not spending time on the basics. So I want you to go watch that YouTube video if you can. But what I recommend is simple remedies. In other words remedies that would not make you have acid reflux eat less, stand straight after you eating rather than slouch like I do. <laughs> Increase your stomach acid. In other words, most people who have acid reflux have low stomach acid rather than high stomach acid. <coughs> there are some home remedies that I recommend to increase your stomach acid so that you digest your food better. Eat a low carb diet. Why is a low carb diet important when you have acid reflux? Because low carb diet reduces the growth of bacteria in your stomach. Why does bacteria grow in your stomach? When they grow, what do they eat? They eat carbs. When they eat carbs, they make gas. When they make gas, does that gas go up? It does. When it goes up, does it take acid with it? It does. So there are several remedies in that and I hope you can try that. Now despite all of that, you might not be successful. So then you need a professional who says, I trust you, I believe you, I think that acid is important for you, I'm going to work with you in ways, surgical ways, so that I prevent the reflux. You had a follow up? Go ahead. So if I have an esophageal hernia that um, says pretty hard to operate, then is the same thing would work? You might need to go to somebody who would work with you. You might even have to travel to Tahoma, Washington and see the physician that I recommend in the YouTube video. Uh -huh. Because there may be nobody who will do it, do stuff like that here. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, last July, I started the keto diet. Uh, within a few days, I stopped taking diabetic medicine and I've taken, I, I ain't going to say when. 5.9 taking medicine to 4.9 but I lost 37 pounds and my blood pressure I'm on free blood pressure medicine and my blood pressure I don't seem to be so the low carb diet has helped you with the diabetic uh, uh, diabetes a lot but has not helped you with blood pressure that is possible not everybody responds the same way to all the different parameters so that's good information. There are several of my patients who have had improvements in their diabetes, who've gotten off diabetic medications, and uh, if anybody else wants to share the story, please do. Yes, sir, Mr. Dekinip. I had a talk of what she was asking about the acid reflux. Uh, I've had acid reflux since I was 18. Uh, I went and saw him last week. I've been taking maybe 12 to 15 uh, for 20 milligrams a day. Ever since I've been on this diet, I haven't had one pill. Like four Excellent. Excellent. The question in the back. So depending on what your weight is, if you are extremely thin, if you are insulin sensitive, then you probably don't need to do as much fasting. But let's say you have markers of overfilled fat cells we would say that you would need to fast about three to five times a week, 12 hour fast. So in other words, have breakfast, skip lunch, no snacking, have an early dinner. So that's the kind of fasting that we recommend and it has to be that you would still maintain a low carb diet while you're fasting. You can't increase your carbs because then you will lose the benefits of fasting. Let's go ahead. Resistant. Will you being on this diet, on this way of uh, eating, will it go away? So if you are insulin resistant, being on this diet, will insulin resistance go away? Yes. The number of times I have seen people go from being diabetic to non-diabetic is innumerable. Um, now, it also depends on your degree of insulin resistant. If you are severely insulin resistant, you may need to cut your carbs way down so that you become a fat burner. And when I say way down, you can probably, you may probably have to go to 20 grams of high quality carbs, which is carbs that have fiber but no sugar. So that is the answer to your question, but yes, it will happen. 
Yes, sir. If you don't take fruits or grains, don't you miss out on some other nutrients which for your body needs? So, um, there is a common fallacy that says that uh, vegetables are high in nutrient value and vitamin value and antioxidants. I would urge you to sign on to our YouTube channel and watch the video on carnivorous diet, animal sourced food. The nutrient value in terms of vitamins, antioxidants, minerals of meat based diet, of animal sourced food is far greater, is far greater. Iron is more bioavailable, um, essential fatty acids like DHA, EPA is more bioavailable, vitamin B12 is only found in animal sourced food, zinc and magnesium are better available. So almost every nutrient is better available in an animal sourced diet compared to a vegetable diet, except for vitamin C. And if I were to try to elaborate how you get vitamin C on an animal source diet, it will take an hour, but I'll leave it at that. Uh, if you want to add extra vitamin C by taking a lemon or a lime, which will improve your gastric acidity anyway, that would be good. All right, we'll, we'll stay around here and uh, we'll answer questions individually, but thank